All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, once again, I want to remind you when you go to your uh, Canvas page and then you got your direct link into your Hawk system, um, you've got uh, this coming weekend on uh, Saturday, you got your quiz number three done. That doesn't mean you have to wait till Saturday to actually get it done. Uh, this is on uh, your section's 2.2 uh, stuff. So 2.1, uh, 2.2 is what quiz number three is on. And of course, your lessons, your homework sets from 2.3a, 2.3b, and 2.4 uh, uh, is going to be due on Sunday. I'll be finishing up uh, getting 2.3b and probably just starting section 2.4, and we'll do that on Friday. So we're actually right here on our on our uh, right on target with our syllabus and stuff like that. So. Um, but before we get started, let's go through a little reminder of what you've learned thus far. All right, so here we go. First thing, and I want to make sure everyone's clear on this. What we're learning is how to take the uh, derivative doing the short method. But you have you have a a formula for taking the derivatives. And yeah, that's what we're learning now, but when I tell you these words, this is the most important thing, okay? Use the definition Use the definition of derivative to find the derivative of, give you a function here, f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 6x minus 3. Okay. And an example like this, and I'm to keep pointing this out because this is the algebra way of doing it. I'm not going to hit you hard on this because I'm only going to give you probably one problem to do like this, but it's going to be a big point total. So I'm going to hit you hard on points. So you've got to know how to do this thing. This idea of the definition of derivative. Definition of derivative. When you hear those words, you're supposed to use the formula f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. I keep practicing this one because this uses our limit knowledge. This is what we learned all that stuff at the beginning of chapter two and in, in chapter one with all that good stuff. So, take the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And I just want to do another problem for you. Yes, it takes a complete page to do this. This is why you can expect one of these problems on your test. Free response, show your work, no work, no credit. Because here's the deal. Well, you can look at this thing and tell what the answer is. This is what we've been learning all along, and we'll talk about these rules once again. But let's take a look at this. f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 6x minus 3. What's the derivative of this guy using our derivative rules? What's the derivative of 2x squared? 4x plus what's the derivative of 6x? 6, and the derivative of minus 3 is 0, so the answer is 4x plus 6. Well, I'm done. All right, you do that on my test when it says use the definition of derivative. It's a 10-point problem. How many points am I going to take off? 15. All right. You can actually make a negative point. Great on my test because you didn't pay attention to directions. Definition derivative is this, and we expect you to have this memorized. I'm not going to give you this. You're supposed to have it memorized. So, f of x is given. It is x, uh, 2x squared uh, plus 6x minus 3. What would f of x plus h be equal to then in this case? This would be 2 times, replace the x with x plus h squared plus 6 times x plus h minus 3. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug the x plus h function in for the x plus, uh, f of x plus h, and I'm going to plug the f of x function in for f of x, and I'm going to get this. This would be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of parentheses around what you plug in. This would be f of x plus h, which is 2 times x plus h squared plus 6 times x plus h minus 3 minus f of x, which equals 2x squared plus 6x minus 3, all over h. See, for you see, 
when we used the uh, computer system, the Hawk system, on doing these problems, we did a couple of these problems in the beginning, but since we've gone to the short method of taking derivatives using the derivative formulas and stuff, we don't do this anymore. And so uh, I want to keep reminding you of this because this is more of a free response kind of a question. Uh, and so you know, I'll show you I can do multiple choice questions, but that's going to be on your basically rules of derivatives and stuff like that. So let's clean this guy up. So f prime of x would be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of, I'm going to clean this guy up. Well, this would be 2 times x plus h squared is actually x plus h times x plus h. I'll clean him up in a second. Here I'm going to distribute the 6. That gives you plus 6x plus 6h minus 3. And here the negative distributes. That's why the in parentheses is very important. So you end up getting minus 2x squared minus 6x plus 3 all over h. Now, at any point in this process with this h on the bottom, you plug in h is 0, you're going to get the famous 0 over 0. The goal is to do algebra and cancel out this h. So, once again, keep cleaning it up. For this x plus h times x plus h, we're going to foil this out. So this derivative function will be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 times x times x is x squared, x times h is xh, h times x is another xh, xh plus xh makes it 2xh, plus h times h is h squared, plus 6x plus 6h minus 3, minus 2x squared, minus 6x plus 3, all over h. Well, i got one more algebra to do before I get rid of all my parentheses, and that's my goal, get rid of the parentheses of the numerator, so a bunch of stuff will cancel. Here, I'm going to distribute 2. This will give you 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared, distribute 2 throughout the x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, and then you got still got your plus 6x plus 6h minus 3, minus 2x squared minus 6x plus 3 all over h. If you do this right, the ultimate goal is this f of x function that you subtracted off in the back should completely go away. It should completely cancel. Watch. 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0. 6x minus 6x is 0. Minus 3 plus 3 is 0. If I tire the back term, completely cancel. That leaves you with f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of 4xh plus 2h squared plus 6h. There are only three terms left in the numerator divided by h, but you'll notice what every one of the terms in the numerator that's left over have in common. What is that? They all have an h, but to be able to cancel that h, you've got to put it in strict multiplication division. That means you've got to factor the h out of your numerator. So this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of factoring out the h, h times 4x plus 2h plus 6. Out of the 4x h, I pull the h out. The 2h squared, I pull one of the h's out, so there's an h to the left over. And with the 6h, I pull the h out, so you're left with the 6, all over h. Then the h is canceled. So your derivative would be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of... 4x plus 2h plus 6. And once you cancel that h off the bottom with this definition derivative, what are you going to do? Then you plug in h is 0. After you cancel out, and once you plug it in, you don't write limit anymore. So you get 4x plus 2 times 0, h is 0, not x, just h is 0, plus 6. And that part goes away, and you're left with your derivative function, which is 4x plus 6 which is exactly what the answer you told me just a few seconds ago when you did it in the short map. This is the work we want to see because, one, it's using the limit stuff. Number two, it's using your algebra skills. And this is actually the, the original way of actually finding derivatives. Now, what we've done through, uh, uh, through analysis and mathematics is we've, we've <laughs> basically discovered the patterns of what happens when you take these derivative functions. And the patterns are, so let's write down these forms again that you need to know. And these right now, in terms of 
taking the groups. And see, so on my test, so I'm really preparing you guys because when we're finished with chapter two, we're about to have another test. But we still got a few more sections to go. But I'm setting you guys up for stuff. So these are the derivative rules. The derivative rules. The first rule. If y is equal to a constant. K, K being a constant. Then, Y prime is equal to what? What's my, what's my Y prime? What's my derivative function? Derivative of a constant. Zero. Doesn't matter what that constant is. Derivative five is zero. Derivative number seven is zero. If it's a constant by himself, it's zero. Property number two says this. If Y equals X, then what's my derivative? What's the derivative of X with respect to X? One. Very good. And number three is an extension off of property number two is this. If y is equal to some kind of a constant times x, then y prime would be equal to constant. Derivative of 5x is 5. Derivative of negative 7x is negative 7. And the reason for that is we're still drumming into your head that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. And when you write a linear term, y equals mx plus b, that linear term, the slope is always the coefficient in front of the x. So when you, when you talk about derivatives, derivative of kx, whatever that constant is, the derivative is always going to be that constant. Okay? Derivative of 5x is 5, derivative of 7x is 7, so forth and so on. <coughs> Problem number four says this. Okay? If I have y is equal to x to the n, the derivative is going to be equal to nx to the n minus 1. That's, you know, you're in trouble when they got names. Called the power rule. To take the derivative, take the derivative of x cubed, the answer is 3x squared. Take the derivative of x to the 1 half, it's going to be 1 half x, and you subtract one from, 1 from the exponent, that'll be to the negative 1 half. 1 half x to the negative 1 half. The derivative of x to the negative 3 is negative 3x, subtract 1, raised to the negative 4. This is how you take derivatives, called the power rule. And what we're really doing is we're shortcutting it. I'm not doing a bunch of limits as h approaches 0 here. Um, we basically discover the pattern. Okay. Now, the book calls it rule number five, an extension on this guy, which is y equals a constant times x to the n, k being a constant. Then your derivative ends up being the constant, you just hold it over, times n x to the n minus one. So this is an extension of the power rule. And the reason for that is, proper number six, anytime you've got y equals a constant times a function, when you take a derivative, you hold the constant over that's being multiplied, and then you take the derivative of the function. Constants hold over. You just hold them out front and take the derivative of the function and just combine it, put combine it up. And the last property is number seven, and it's called the sum difference property. If you have y equals some kind of function, plus or minus a different function, these are f of x and g of x terms. So you got two, three, four, whatever. A function plus or minus another function. Then the derivative is going to be the derivative of the first function plus or minus the derivative of the second function. This is called the sum slash difference rule. So these are your basic derivatives. Again, we went over these things last time. So... And the other concepts that we're going to try to drum into your head is this. When do I take a derivative? Well, one, when I slap you upside the head with the word. Take the derivative of this. That, that pretty much is cool. Previous directions. But we're going to be starting throwing word problems at you guys. So you should take the derivative of somebody when you hear the words slope slope of the tangent line because the derivative is a formula for the slope of the tangent line. So when you hear the words, just find the slope of the tangent line, you, you're going to be taking the derivative of somebody, okay? And then plugging in the number. 
Another word is the word rate of change. And traditionally, we're going to be talking about that word it being instantaneous. Instantaneous rate of change. That means take a derivative. But we're math people, so you know we're going to shorten it up a little bit. So when you hear the words, uh, find the rate of something or other, eh, that word rate is a clue that you should be taking a derivative of somebody. Okay? All right. And another one that we're going to get into in section 2.4 is the word marginal. Marginal also, all these words right here mean derivative. Slope of the change line or slope, rate of change, rate, marginal, all these words. Now, marginal is going to be back into our business concepts. You're familiar with the formulas we went over way back when in chapter 1.8 that come back to haunt you guys. Uh, for example, profit is equal to revenue minus cost. And then we talk about revenue. Revenue is equal to the number of units sold times the demand or times the price of each unit. Okay, and cost, well, that can vary depending on the circumstance and stuff. So you get create functions with this stuff. And then profit is revenue minus cost. And then we talk about concepts of marginal cost marginal revenue, and marginal profit. That's going to be the derivative of profit, derivative of revenue, and derivative of cost. That's marginal. When you hear those words, it means derivative. And another word that also, in terms of units, when you are looking at the units, when you hear the word per, it's a derivative. For example, I got this function, you know, I got a distance function, you know, for example, uh, you guys, uh, let's say you guys drove, to, you, you guys live, I don't know, live in Concord, so you live about uh, 10 miles away or something like that, then you drove to school, how fast did you go? Well, I would say 55 miles per hour, but I've seen the traffic jams in front of the university, you probably went about 4 miles per hour, but pay attention to units, miles per hour. That word per, that's a derivative. So the derivative of distance is actually, what does miles per hour actually measure? Velocity. And then I can take a derivative again, take a, a derivative with respect to time again, miles per hour per hour, or miles per hour squared. That will be a second derivative. So you, and that's called acceleration. So that idea of per, when you hear per, that also means you took a derivative of somebody. Okay? So these are clues of what we're about to get into. Now, the other thing is this. Do you guys know who developed calculus? Yeah, pretty much. Which genius? You guys should know this. History of math, and history in general. All right, Newton, very good. Sir Isaac Newton, all right? He also developed a bunch of stuff in physics, you know, Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, things like that. <laughs> but Sir Isaac Newton discovered uh, uh, calculus and, and discovered the concept of derivative. And he's the one that came up with the prime notation. So if you've got y equals f of x, some kind of a function, okay, <laughs> the derivative would be denoted y with a hash mark or f prime of x. y prime or f prime of x. This is the derivative notation. This is called the Newtonian notation. This is based upon how Sir Isaac Newton wrote it up. Newton. Okay? However, there was another guy. Now, Sir Isaac Newton, this is English. There was another guy from Germany that developed calculus about the same time. And his name was Leibniz. And the Leibniz notation is this. dy over dx. That would also mean the same thing as derivative. Or df over dx. And as I mentioned to you before, it's a variation of this concept of delta y over delta x being the slope. This is your Leibniz notation. This is your Newtonian notation, 
and because you guys are 21st century calculus students, you got to know both notations. So don't be surprised when you see dy over dx, the derivative of y function with respect to x, or the derivative of f function with respect to x. That's the classic Leibniz notation. If you see the little prime, that is your classic Newtonian notation. So, all right. Let's get into section 2.3. The concept of slope, rate of change, and considered algebraically. What's exactly going on here? Okay. Because uh, the derivative of a function can be interpreted as the slope of the change of line to the graph of the function, it is, also, it is now possible to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of a function at a given point. In this lesson, we will learn these uh, equations. We will use algebraic manipulations to write functions in such a way that the power rule can be applied when finding the derivative. So key to calculus is and has always been algebra. Clean it up first, then take your derivative. That's what this section is about, too. So here we go. In terms of your notation stuff here, if f of x is a differentiable function and c is a constant, then y equals c times f of if y equals c times f of x, then dy over dx. They're introducing this Newtonian notation to you guys. What would that be equal to? Well, what's the rule about taking the derivative of a constant times a function? That's going to be equal to what? The constant times the derivative function. Constants hold over, and you take the derivative of that function. Okay. And so that's my payment rule about constants hold over. And number two, if f, and g, f of x and g of x are differentiable functions, and y equals f of x plus or minus g of x, then dy over dx, and again introducing that Newtonian or that Leibniz notation, is going to be equal to what? How do you take the derivative of things being added or subtracted? What do you do? Very good. You take the derivative of each one and add or subtract. So that would be equal to f prime of x times g prime of x. Okay. So, again, going to the famous www.hawkstv.com, which is, uh, again, connected with our uh, Hawk system here, but you can go into their website and go in through the uh, Central Calculus book and figure out Chapter 2.3b. Uh, You'll see their little video. It will be a different problem. It's a similar problem. Here's the deal. Find the derivative function f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 6 fifths plus 5x to the 1 fourth plus 6x cubed by using the famous sum slash difference rule. All right, first things first, write it down. And clean them up, but f of x looks pretty good here. It's negative 2x squared plus 6 fifths plus 5x to the 1 fourth plus 6x cubed. You're supposed to take your... Well, negative 2 is a constant. Hold over. Again, the goal is to get you to do this stuff in your head. So negative 2 is a constant. The derivative of x squared is what? You bring down the exponent, subtract 1. What's the derivative of x squared? 2x. But you multiply that 2 times that negative 2, and what do you get? Negative 4. So it would be negative 4 times x. The derivative of negative 2x squared is negative 4x. And this is for your benefit. Plus, what's the derivative of 6 fifths? Zero, because there is no variable with this guy, so therefore it's a constant, and derivative of constant, zero. Plus, what's the derivative of 5x to the 1 fourth? Yes, you're going to have to deal with fractions in here. Well, you bring down your power, and you multiply. 5 times a fourth is? 5 fourths. x, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. 1 fourth minus 1 is how much? Very good. Negative 3 fourths. Plus... Last but not least, what's the derivative of 6x cubed? Very good. 18x squared. Bring down your power. 3 times 6 is 18x. And subtract 1 squared. And so, just cleaning them up, the answer is negative 4x plus 5 fourths x to the negative 3 fourths plus 18x squared. Take my solution. When you take a derivative of things being added or subtracted, you take a derivative of each one. But now, 
Remember, we only have, and the way I've written them up for you guys, is seven formulas to take derivative stuff. That's it. And you can really combine a lot of these guys. But the big deal is the power rule, the sum difference rule, and the old derivative of constant of zero. That's what this really boils down to. So we're going to be taking derivative of, quote, a lot harder stuff here. Okay? So it says this. Use algebraic techniques, a.k.a. simplify, to re rewrite each function as a sum or difference and then take its derivative. Because right now, I haven't told you guys the what the concept of what we call the quotient rule or the product rule, division or multiplication. That comes actually in chapter three. So all we got now is those uh, seven forms that we just talked about. So the first thing I want to do is clean this guy up. Look at this first guy. G of x is equal to 9x to the 6 plus 5x to the 9th divided by x to the 4th. Now, the first thing you should notice is this. Yes, it's a division problem, and I don't have a rule for this interesting division stuff. But I do have algebra, and since I'm dividing by a single term, I can rewrite this guy by taking the single denominator and putting it under each term in the numerator. So this would give you 9x to the 6 divided by x to the 4th plus 5x to the 9th divided by x to the 4th. And then you're going to clean it up. When you divide variables with exponents, what do I get to do with the exponents? Subtract. Top minus bottom. Constant stays there. This will be 9. x to the 6 divided by x to the 4th is going to be x squared. 6 minus 4 is 2. Plus 5. x to the 9th divided by x to the 4th. Well, when I divide, I subtract exponents. What am I going to get? x to the 5th. Yeah. So this guy cleans up very nicely. So here is your g of x function. g of x is actually equal to 9x squared plus 5x to the fifth. Now, and again, I keep reminding you of this. In calculus, notation is everything. You've got to always write down your notation. We want you to take the derivative of this guy. This function was called g of x. What's this derivative called? We'll use that Newtonian notation, g prime of x. If you guys that love lightning, knock yourself out. DG over DX if you want to. Okay? But you got to label them somehow, some way. Now let's take a derivative. This is the uh, sum rule. What's the derivative of 9X squared? 18X plus what's the derivative of 5X to the fifth? 25X to the fourth. And there is my answer. But notice how much algebra I had to do before to clean him up, to get him into my forms so I can take a derivative of Look at the next guy. f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 4 times 3x squared plus 3. This is not in the form that I have of a sum or difference. So I'm going to clean this guy up, also known as expand. Simplify if you want to. I'm going to fold this thing out. So folding this thing out, this is going to give me, well, let's see here, 2x squared times 3x squared. Well, multiply your numbers. 2 times 3 is 6 x squared times x squared, when you multiply, you add exponents, that'll be x to the 4. Then, outer, 2x squared times 3, 2 times 3 is 6, that'll be plus 6x squared. Then, enter, 4 times 3x squared, 4 times 3 is 12x squared. And then last, 4 times 3 is 12. Of course, combine my terms, so f of x is going to be equal to 6x to the 4 plus, well, I got 6x squared plus 12x squared. What do I got? Plus 18x squared plus 12. There's my cleaned up version of my answer, and it's in the form now that I can take its derivative. So f prime of x would be equal to what? What's the derivative of 6x to the 4? 24x to the 3rd plus... What is the derivative of 18x squared? Very good. 36x. And what's the derivative of 12? Zero, because it's a constant. I need to put plus zero. And there's my solution. Does that make sense? Look at the next one. Oh, no, fractional exponents. Oh, they're only going to get worse for you guys in here. But no worries. You do the same stuff. You just have to deal with fractions. So y is equal to... 
x to the 3 fourths minus 4x to the 1 fourth minus 3x to the 9 fourths plus 6. Again, this is a weird product thing here, and the only thing I've got is a sum difference. So I'm going to clean this guy up, expand it, simplify it, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to distribute. I'm going to distribute this x to the 3 fourths times each one of these terms. And remember, when you multiply, you add exponents. So this will end up giving you y is equal to x to the 3 fourths times a negative x to the 1 fourth. Well, that would be negative 4. x to the 3 fourths times x to the 1 fourth is what? When you multiply, you add exponents. What is 3 fourths plus 1 fourth? 1. That will be x to the first or just x. That worked out very nicely. Does that make sense? 3 fourths plus 1 fourth is 1, x to the first. Now, x to 3 fourths times a negative 3x to the 9 fourths. Well, that'll be a minus 3x. And here we go. What's x to the 3 fourths uh, times x to the 9 fourths? Well, when you multiply, you add exponents. What is 3 fourths plus 9 fourths? 12 fourths, but 12 fourths is also known as 3. I see you working out all the time. And then the last one, of course. X to the 3 fourths times a 6 just gives you plus 6x to the 3 fourths. Does that make sense? Well, that is just cleaning it up, but I have to clean it up first so I can take its derivative. This function is called y, so its derivative is called y prime, or for you Latinx fans out there, dy over dx, because x is your variable there, is equal to what? What's derivative of negative 4x? Negative 4. Negative 4. Minus, what's the root of a 3x cubed? 9x squared plus, what is the derivative of 6x to the 3 fourths? Well, if you can't do a bunch of stuff in your head, write it down. It's all right. Hold that 6. What's the derivative of x to the 3 fourths? That'll be, bring down your power, 3 fourths x, and then you've got to subtract 1. What is 3 fourths minus 1? Negative 1 fourth. Does that make sense? 3 fourths minus 1 is negative 1 fourth. Now, clean it up. So, I'm going to come over here and clean up my fraction. What is 6 times 3 fourths? How would you clean that guy up? Well, let's see here. 6, you can rewrite as what? 2 times 3. And 4, you can rewrite as 2 times 2. And this is being multiplied. This is being divided. So, one of your 2's cancels there, and you're left with a 3 times a 3, which is a 9 over a 2. So your derivative is going to be negative 4 minus 9x to the 4 plus 9 halves x to the negative 1 4. There's lots of different ways about reducing fractions, but that's what you end up having to do. Uh, for the rest of you guys out here, you could have done this. Well, you know, when you multiply fractions here, you make 6 a fraction, make it 6 over 1. And 6 over 1 times 3 fourths is 18 over 4. And then they both have factors of 2. 18 fourths, same thing as 9 halves. So however you get your fraction, knock yourself out. But you want to reduce fractions in here. And the reason for that is, now if you throw this answer on Hawks and just left it like this, the computer's going to give you credit for it. But I'm also setting you guys up for a test. And I'm going to give you some multiple choice questions on the test. And I won't leave the answer like this. I'm going to clean it up and then make you pick out the multiple choice answer off the thing. So you've got to have the ability to do your algebra on cleaning this stuff up. Look at next one. G of x is equal to 4x plus 5x to the 1 half minus 1 divided by the square root of x. Okay? First things first. I don't do square roots. What's the square root also known as? X to the 1 half. So this is the same thing as g of x is equal to 4x uh, plus 5x to the 1 half minus 1 divided by x to the 1 half. And again, I don't have a rule for division. Well, not yet anyway. And so I want to clean this guy up to do it into a sum, sum or difference. Again, you'll notice that you have a single denominator. With a single denominator... I can put that single denominator under each term in the numerator and bust it up. So it'll be 4x divided by x to the 1 half plus 5x to the 1 half divided by x to the 1 half minus 1 over x to the 1 half. And now I'm going to clean them up some more. 
but when I divide, I subtract exponents. The constant stays there, so this will be 4. But I got x as a fishy to the first power. We don't typically write the first power, but it's x, x to the first power, divided by x to the half. When you divide, you subtract exponents. 1 minus a half is 1 half. That would be x to the 1 half. Plus, 5 is even better. I got 5x to the 1 half divided by x to the 1 half. What happens to the x to the 1 half? Completely cancel. If you want to, it's x to the 0, but anything to the 0 power is 1. So it just completely cancels. You don't get 5. However, this last term, I got 1 over x to the 1 half. I don't like my variables in the denominator. So I'm going to bring them to the numerator, but then the exponent has to become negative. So this will be minus x to the negative 1 half. So there is my g function. I'm going to rewrite it right here. So g of x is that cleaned up is equal to 4x to the 1 half plus 5 minus x to the negative 1 half. Now we're supposed to take the derivative, g prime of x. What is my g prime of x going to be equal to? Well, what is the derivative of 4x to the 1 half? We'll bring down your power. What's a half of 4? 2x and subtract 1 from your exponent. A half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Plus, what's the derivative of 5? 0, so that goes away. No need to write that. Minus x to the negative 1 half. We'll take rid of that. You bring down your power. A minus a negative 1 half becomes a plus 1 half. Minus a negative is a positive. x, and here we go. What is negative 1 half minus 1? Subtract 1 from the x one. <coughs> minus 1 half minus 1. What is that? Negative 3 half. <coughs> and there is my result. So far, so good? All right. Look at the next one. You are going to see several of these kind of problems. So take a look at the wording here. It says this. Find an equation of the find the equation of the tangent line for the function f of x equals x cubed plus 2x minus 4 at x equals negative 1. This is the first of hundreds of thousands of problems we're going to give you guys on find the equation of the tangent line. But most important is these first few words. Because most people, when they read a problem like this, they have a problem and they don't even know where to start. This is where you start. When you hear the words, Find the equation of the tangent line. When you hear the words, find the equation of a, tangent of a line, any kind of line, we're going to get work calculus, so it's going to be tangent lines. We always use the same formula in terms of lines. It's the formula that you, most people don't remember from high school, but it's the most important form of equation of a line. Remember what it is? Okay, what's his name? Point slope formula. And you got it. Y minus Y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is my form that i got to use. Anytime I hear the words, find the equation of a line, I don't care what kind of line it is, I'm going to use the point-slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is called the point-slope formula. We're math people. Don't think too deep in this. We've got to have two things, a point and a slope. Look what they gave me. They gave me a function. f of x equals x cubed plus 2x minus 4 at x equals negative 1. Okay? They gave me half a point. X equals negative 1. A point is an X and a Y coordinate. How do I get a Y coordinate? How do I get my Y coordinate? I'm going to plug the X into the original function. F of negative 1. Plugging X is negative 1 into the original function. This is going to give you negative 1 cubed plus 2 times negative 1 minus 4. Cleaning that up, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus 4. Minus 1, minus 2 is minus 3, minus 4 is minus 7. So I actually have a point, and my point is, what was my x-coordinate? Negative 1, and the y-coordinate is negative 7. So I've got this part down. I got my point. To use the point-slope formula, the next thing i got to have is a slope. But you guys have been programmed personally by me. When you hear the word slope of the tangent line, what are you going to do? Being a calculus class and all. That's right. Take a derivative. So remember, the derivative is a formula for the slope of the tangent line. So my derivative is going to be f 
prime of x. Here comes my derivative. What is derivative of x cubed? 3x squared plus what's derivative of 2x? 2. And what's derivative of minus 4? 0. So derivative of x cubed plus 2x minus 4 is 3x squared plus 2. You with me? Now that's just the derivative. But that's the guy I need. So to get the slope of the tangent line, and my little symbol for slope of a tangent line is m sub t, is going to be equal to the derivative evaluated at your point. What well, x point will we chunk it into this thing? Negative 1. So now I'm going to take that x that was given, negative 1, and plug it into the derivative. It's going to give me a numerical value that actually is going to be the slope of the tangent line. So this would be equal to, my derivative again is 3x squared plus 2. So f of negative 1 would be 3 times negative 1 squared plus 2. Negative 1 squared is uh, 1 times 3 is uh, 3 uh, plus 2 is 5. So my slope of my tangent line is equal to 5. That's my derivative evaluated at negative 1. Does that make sense? And now I've got all the pieces of the game that I need to win the game. So... They said find the equation of a line. I could use point slope formula. I found the point by figuring out what the y coordinate is. They always give you the function of the x. And I found my slope by taking the derivative and plugging in the x coordinate they gave me, negative 1. So my slope of my tangent line is 5. My point is negative 1, negative 7. So I plug it into my point slope formula. That would be y minus the y coordinate, which is negative 7, is equal to my slope of my tangent line, 5 times x minus my x coordinate, which is negative 1. And I want you to see the way I do this. Careless error kills in this class. Not just kills because when you're out there in the real world and you're making a bridge and it doesn't make it to the other side of the river and people die, it's your fault because you screwed up the math, okay? But it also kills your grade. So careless errors kill all over the place. Take your time. I wrote minus minus because I don't want to screw this up. A minus a negative means what? Plus. So it'll be y plus 7 is equal to 5 times x plus 1. Now, I'll be the first to admit to you, the most important equation of a line is the point-slope formula, but it's not the prettiest. Most people, when they want to solve for an equation of a line, they put it in the famous slope-intercept form. You remember, the old y equals mx plus b. They like to solve this thing for y. Let's do the same. Let's solve it for y. Solving it for y, I'm going to distribute the 5. So this would give me y plus 7 is equal to 5x plus 5. And then what's my last move to solve for y? Subtract 7 from both sides. And then that will give me y equals 5x. And then uh, 5 minus 7 is negative 2. And I'll circle it right there and so kind of squeeze the answer in. But that's the equation of the tangent line. It is y equals 5x minus 2, and it's the equation of the tangent line of the function f of x equals x cubed plus 2x minus 4 at the point x equals negative 1. And so if you wanted to see a visual perspective of this, go in there, y equals, I'm going to graph it for you guys, x cubed plus 2x minus 4. And I'm going to do a zoom standard, zoom 6, negative 10 by 10 screen. Okay? So there's my graph right there. And if I go in there under y2 and type in my equation of my tangent line, and the equation of the tangent line, just to remind you, was 5x minus 2. 5x minus 2. And I graph that guy. And you focus right here on the point negative 1, negative 7, right here. So I'm going to kind of zoom in. Zoom in down here at the point negative 1, negative 7. That's close enough right in there. Boom. You're going to see the curve. There's my curve. And here comes my tangent line. We're kind of close together. But it just hits that one point and then moves off in that direction. That's what we're finding. Okay? Look at the next problem. It says this. A town's population, t years from now, can be estimated from the formula P of t equals 9,850 uh, plus 550t 
minus 144 times the square root of t. Find the rate at which the town is growing after nine years. Okay. So, again, this is a word problem. I'm trying to clue you guys in on what to do and when to do it. All right, so they gave me a function that represents population based upon time, t. Time is being measured in years, and this is a population for a town, so I assume it's measured in people. All right, so I've got, got my units there. And then they mention the word right there. Find the rate. When you hear the word rate, what are you going to do? Take the derivative. So my derivative, first thing I'm going to do is clean up my function. So P of T is equal to 9,850 plus 550T minus 144. But I don't do square roots. What's the square root again? It'll be T to the 1 half power. Now I'm going to take my derivative. E prime T. And I just want to throw the Leibniz notation at you guys on this one as well. What would the Leibniz notation be? Well, my function is called P, so that would be DP divided by D, what was the independent variable of my function? T. So the Leibniz notation for the derivative would be DP over DT. Or, if you guys like Newton, knock yourself out. Perfectly acceptable. P prime of T. What's my derivative? Well, the derivative of 9,850 is what? Zero, because it's a constant. Plus, what's the derivative of 550t? 550. Minus, here we go, what is the derivative of 144t to the one-half? Well, bring down your power. What's half of 144? Very good. 72t to the subtract one, negative one-half. There's my derivative function. And I want to clean him up because what we're going to do here is plug in nine years. So this would be dp over dt is equal to, well, this p prime of t. This is 550 minus 72. A negative exponent puts him on the bottom. And a half a power is what kind of a function here? Square root. So that would be 72 divided by the square root of t. So now... What we're trying to do here is we're supposed to uh, find the rate at which the town is growing after nine years. So this would be dp over dt evaluated. You draw a little line down there. Get you guys used to the Leibniz notation here. With t is equal to nine. That would also be the same thing as p prime of nine. <coughs> plugging in time is nine. And this would be 550 minus 72 divided by the square root of nine. All right. And I'm going to stick this one on the old handy dandy calculator here. 550 minus 72 divided by, well, the square root of 9 is what? 3. Let me type in 3. And what do I get? I get 526. Does that make sense? But one last thing. It's a word problem. And on word problems, I expect to see your units. What would your units be? You just took a derivative. Now, first off, what is population measured in? People. What is time being measured in? Years. So what would my units be for the derivative? And remember, every time you take a derivative, it's a per. So what's my answer going to be? Very good. This would be people per year. Now, one last thing on this one is this. When you look at a problem like this, and you look at the P prime, and the Leibniz notation is great because it's real short and quick, but actually what's more poignant in terms of notations is actually the Leibniz. Look at Leibniz. It's dP over dt. So with that notation, you know what the units are going to be. What is P measured in? People. Over, that's your per. Time is measured in years. So when you use the Leibniz notation, it really does set you up with what the units are going to be, people per year. One last thing before I let you guys go. The next section, just wanted to talk about it for a second. Applications of marginal analysis. Again, business majors, this is hugely important. But I told you guys the big deal about this. This idea of marginal. When we start talking about marginal, 
we're talking about derivatives. So we're going to go back and look at profit, revenue, and cost. You've got to go back and look at these formulas again. Now, revenue is always equal to, and the notation is big R of X, it's always equal to the number of units you sell, typically that'll be X, times the price, also known as the demand equation. So it's X times price. But you, you, so that's a formula you need to know for revenue. Cost, well that really depends on your situation. Most of the times they'll give you a cost equation or they'll set you up with a cost equation. It's $5 per unit, so you take $5 times X, that'll be your cost for everything. All right, so you got your cost. Profit is equal to what? What's your formula for profit? Revenue minus cost. Now, what we're interested in is marginal. Marginal profit, marginal revenue, marginal cost. Marginal means derivative. So what is revenue measured in? How much money you bring into your store? We're Americans. What do we like? Do well, not what kind of money? Dollars. Thank you. Dollars. So dollars is what we're after here, right? But if I'm talking about marginal, it's a derivative. So that's going to be dollars per, and you take derivative back to X, X are units. It's going to be dollars per unit. So your marginal revenue is going to be dollars per unit. Your marginal profit will be dollars per unit. And your marginal cost is going to be dollars per unit because cost, revenue, and profit are all measured in dollars. When you take a derivative, it'll be a per, per unit. This is what we're setting up for. So read up ahead, and I'll see you guys on Friday.